This is Coach Matt for Tackle Trading to bring you a video on the importance of conducting your daily routine and specifically what to go through in your daily routine. Doing the little things the right way is what we want to instill in traders because we firmly believe that the secret to success can be found in the execution of your routine. And, and what I've said many, many times is that knowledge and education is fantastic, but it's nothing unless you execute that knowledge and take action on that. And one of the things that new traders kind of struggle with is what to specifically do in a step-by-step -step daily routine. And that's what I want to talk about today is specifically the actions we take and where we take them in our daily routine. Now, when it comes to daily routine, we're really talking about a few different things. The first thing we want to do is we want to get the lay of the land. And when we're talking about the lay of the land, we're just trying to understand the things that are impacting the market and and the things that the market is focused on that day. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check the news. After we check the news, we want to look at the economic calendar to identify any economic reports that are coming out that could have an impact on the market or economic reports that already came out that we can go look at and how the market responded to those. We also want to analyze the broad market and we want to scan the heat map. So let's talk about these individually one by one. There's a lot of news sources out there that are absolutely great out there and there's a lot of news sources that you have to kind of question out there. And although I'm not going to get into the fake news, no news, good news, bad news, I will be the first to admit that all news is biased. And what I want to look at is I just want to look at sources that give me what's happening in the marketplace on a daily basis. Investing.com, briefing.com, seeking alpha, tackle trading. Those are wonderful sources of where you can go out there and identify the news. So let's take a look at some of those sources. The first one we're looking at here is on investing.com. And what I like about this source is the top five things to know in the market on, on whatever particular day. And if you just look at the news here, you can go to that and it's updated every single day. And as you can see, it just lists out the very things, the high level things that are impacting the market that day. And on this specific day, Bank of America, Netflix, IBM are releasing earnings. The G7 is focused on, you know, tax taxes and so on and so forth. A really great source just to get the top five things that are impacting the market market that day and that's on investing.com one of my favorite sources here is briefing.com and if you click on our view page one page one is something I've been reading for years and years and years and it's a wonderful way just to get a really short write-up kind of like that top five things but this is just a really short write-up of what is impacting the market that day and it's just one page and it just identifies any major earnings reports any major economic reports anything that the market is focusing on any geopolitical situations as well and that's briefing.com page one wall street breakfast on sinking alpha is another source where you can just come to get just a quick identification of the major news sources that are impacting the market that day and obviously here at tackletrading.com we have on the trade center you can look at the market skyline you can see the news you can see the economic calendars some of our reports trading journals a glossary of charts so there's a lot of detailed and deep content that you can identify here and if you just click on that news source right here you can kind of see a list of all the major headlines that are coming out there on a daily basis as well and so you see the CNBC the New York Times Reuters a lot of different news sources and so when a headline comes out it updates it here in the news icon there at tackletrading.com as well now after we've checked the news and, and again this should only take about five to ten minutes because all of these write-ups are you know one page or the top five things the market's focused on or getting the entire list of tackle trading on, on all the headlines but you don't want to be inundated with news you just want to understand what really is impacting the broad market on that specific day and when we do that the next step in our daily routine is we're going to go to forexfactory.com and we're going to analyze the economic calendar now here at forexfactory.com if you click on the calendar you can see a list of all the major minor intermediate economic reports that are coming out that impacts every currency every economic system out there in the marketplace and obviously there's a lot of data here but most of this data is just simply not important and especially if all you're doing is looking at trading u.s stocks and u.s marketplace so if you look at the filter icon up here you click on that filter go to none click on US dollar economic reports, click on none of the expected, and the only things I wanna see 
are the mid to major type economic reports that really can impact that market that week. And as you can see, now we got a list we can work off. Now the orange, those are inter intermediate economic reports. The red ones, these are major economic reports. So as you can see, retail sales numbers, the G7 meeting, anytime Chairman Powell gives a speech, that's gonna be important. If you look at you know the next week, core durable goods, advanced GDP, looking at the next week, you can start to see unemployment, manufacturing report. When you're talking about those major economic reports, you're talking about inflationary reports like the PPI or the CPI number or the PCE index that comes out of the Fed. When you're talking about other economic reports such as manufacturing, housing data, retail sales, GDP, Fed announcements, unemployment, labor type uh, economic reports. These are the major economic reports that we're talking about. It doesn't mean these other ones are not important. They certainly can have an impact, but when you're looking at the red economic reports, such as the ones that are coming out this week, looking at say the, the retail sales numbers, what I wanna do here is I wanna identify when the report comes out. It came out at Tuesday at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You see the forecasted number at 0.1. The actual number came in at 0.4. And what I wanna do at that point is I simply want to understand how the market responded to the report. And if you don't know what an economic report is or, or, or you know what it measures or how important it is, you can look at opening up the detail button here and it will tell you what it measures, why it's important, the usual impact. And so if the actual number is greater than the forecasted number, Number, it's good for the currency typically. And so if you have a forecasted number of 0.1, but retail sales came in at 0.4, that's a better number than the actual forecasted number. Well, what should have happened to the United States dollar? The dollar should have appreciated in value at that moment. So right here, we're looking at the dollar index. And with the dollar index, it's dollar sign DXY if you're looking at it within thinkorswim. But when you're looking at the dollar index, it's a basket of currencies against the dollar. So it's the dollar versus the euro, the pound, the Swiss franc, the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, the Japanese yen, the New Zealand dollar. And so if you're looking at this from a price perspective, from an economic report, remember retail sales came out on Tuesday, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. That would be 6.30 my time. And as you can see, this is right here where that economic report came out. So if you're looking at that specific time frame right here, you can kind of see how the market is appreciating coming into the report, but for about an hour, an hour and a half right before the report, it just kind of consolidates here because it's gonna wait for that report to come out because it's a major economic report. And as that major economic report came out, the number was better than the expectation. So what did we see? We saw the dollar appreciate here. And so when it comes back down to understanding the economic reports and why they're important, they're gonna have an impact on the marketplace because economic reports are known as leading indicators. They are announced and the market responds to those types of reports. As you saw just barely, the market went up in terms of the dollar based on that report. And if you looked at the detail here, that's exactly what should have transpired. So when I'm looking at economic reports, what I wanna do is I wanna identify the report when it came out and then I want to simply identify how did the S&P 500 respond to it and how did the dollar index respond to it as well. After we assess the economic report, at this point, I want to analyze the broad market indexes. And there's a lot of ways to analyze the broad market indexes. You can do them at tackletrading.com. Finviz is a wonderful way to analyze them as a collective. You obviously can look at them in your broker software as, as well. But what I'm trying to attempt to do when I'm analyzing the indexes is I'm trying to establish my market posture, my bias to the market. Am I bullish? Am I bearish? Am I neutral? What degree of bullish versus bearish am I? And I always want to make sure that my portfolio is always moving in the direction of the primary trend within the broad market indexes themselves. But I'm not just trying to determine my bias. I'm also trying to determine what types of trades I want to go out there and find. Because if the market is sitting at a support level in a bullish uptrend, I certainly want to be a buyer in that capacity. But if the market is sitting at resistance in an uptrend, I might want to hesitate in, until I see a better pattern develop. I'm establishing my bias number one, but I'm also establishing where the market is in relationship to support and resistance. And 
where my anticipation for the market to go for the next few days. So coming here to tackle trading, if you go ahead and look at the market skyline right here, as you can see, you got the heat map you can look at. We'll talk about the heat map here in just one second. But if you scroll down, we have some charts that are pre-custom where you can go through all of the major market indexes when you're looking at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, the Russell 2000, the VIX, the emerging markets, the Vanguard total market index from the world. You can quickly just go through and identify all the major indexes, what they're doing from a trend or a price perspective. But you can also, as you scroll down here, you also got all your major commodities. And if we scroll down a little bit more, here's all your major sectors. So once again, what I'm trying to establish here is just a simple understanding of where the market is from a trend perspective and where the market is from an overall bias in relationship to support and resistance. So you can do all this here at Tackle Trading, but if you look at FinViz as well, if you look at the futures here, just click on futures and then click on indices, you can look at all of these charts simultaneously within the market. So the Dow Jones, S&P, NASDAQ, Russell 2000, the Nike, the Euro Stock Index, the DAX, as well as the Volatility Index here. So you have them all right here you can kind of look at. Once again, you got them over here at Tackle Trading as well. But one of the ways and what most traders do is they'll simply look at the indexes from a technical perspective here within their broker software. So if I go to the daily chart here, what I'm trying to establish is my overall market posture. And as you can see, the market is bullish, bullish, bullish. But what you're starting to see up here is a little bit of slowing momentum. And as you can see with the candles coming back down, being overextended with the doji type candle at the top end of the channel, the most likely scenario, despite the fact that it's bullish, is the market's gonna come down and find some support level down here. So on a day like today, where we have a big downward movement in price, and we have a support level right here, what I would determine is I would be some degree of slightly bullish in the marketplace, but I might be hesitant on the bullish trades, just waiting for it to come find a support level to where it dojis that support and then we get that upward moving in price. So as the market's coming down, I might not look to make a lot of bullish trades here in the market, but I might be preparing to make some bullish trades if we get some slowing momentum right here at that rising 20 day moving average, give me a little bit of a doji. So again, what I'm trying to establish is two things. Number one, is my overall market bias. And that is always based on the trend. The market's gonna go up and down in a short-term trend, no doubt about that. So I'm not, I don't wanna make radical changes to my market bias, but I do wanna make subtle changes given if I expect the market to come down over the short term, or if I expect the market to go back up. And so if I'm gonna establish this as a short-term bullish uptrade, positive one, well, what does that mean? Well, what that means, if you look at the Tackle Trading Portfolio Journal, if I say, if I have a $100,000 in the account, well, what that means is I wanna carry a slightly bullish delta. And so if I have $100,000 in the account, my slightly bullish delta will tell me I wanna carry a positive somewhere around 400, 500, 300, somewhere between neutrality and that 400 would be some degree of slightly bullish. As you get into the 700 and the 1,000, obviously you're getting into very bullish situations. So in terms of if I have a $10,000 account here, what that market bias helps me determine is where I have my portfolio delta at between the 40 and the 70, somewhere into that range, because that means that my market bias is matching my portfolio bias, and I always want to do that. And we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit more here in just one second when we move on to one of the next steps within the daily routine. Now, the last thing I want to do within the lay of the land, just kind of gathering information before we go in and manage our portfolio and make new trades, is I want to scan the heat map. Now, here at the heat map found on the market skyline, the same area where you were looking at the indices, what a heat map does is it allows us to look at the entire marketplace from a 64,000 foot in the air just to kind of understand what is really happening in the market. In looking at the market uh, indices just a moment ago, 
In looking at the market indices just a moment ago, we looked at the market coming down on the day. Well, does that mean everything went down? No, Adobe went up 1.2%, Abbott Labs went up 3.3%, Boeing went up 1.87%, CCAS, CTAS went up 8.74%. They had a very good earnings report. And so I'm trying just to get an understanding of what is happening in the marketplace from a high level. I might want to stay away from the railroads. On a market that went down 1%, Union Pacific went down 6%. CS SX went down 10%. So I might want to stay away from that level because they had some bad earnings reports. Basic materials and independent oil and gas came down fairly aggressively. So the heat map is just showing me th from a color coding perspective exactly what is happening on that market on that day. And if you understand candle relationships, Abbott Lab up 3%, that should have a big green candle. You know, Berkshire down 2.5%, that should have a big red candle. Big red and green candles, they have a tendency to continue moving. And so I'm not only looking at it from an, just a high level perspective, I'm generating ideas for where I want to either go or where I want to stay away from, from a market perspective. In the first step of your daily routine, you're just getting a lay of the land. You've checked the news, you've looked at the economic calendar, you've analyzed the broad market indexes, you've scanned the heat map, you're really getting an understanding for what's impacting and happening in the market from a high level perspective, a news perspective and an economic perspective. Now that we get all that information, and you should be about 15 minutes into your daily routine at this point, now we go into the marketplace and we manage our portfolio. And when we're managing our portfolio, we're looking to do three things. Number one, we're looking to delta weight our portfolio. Number two, we want to identify our theta number to let us understand, are we cash flowing in the market with positive theta or are we losing money in the market from a negative theta perspective? And then we want to manage those individual trades in adjusting stop losses, locking in profit, scaling out of positions and everything we do from a trade management perspective. So when it comes to delta weighting your portfolio, like we just talked about, delta is a measurement of direction in the marketplace. What it helps us understand if our portfolio is matching our own personal bias of where we think the market's going to go. And when you look at your delta weighting calculation here, all you have to do is type in your account size. Let's say you have $5,000 in your portfolio. Well, this will quickly adjust the delta numbers to where you want to look at them. If you have $250,000 in your portfolio, once again, it will adjust to tell you where you want your delta to be. And if you're slightly bullish in the market, like we just talked about, we want somewhere around a thousand delta against a $250,000 portfolio. If I log into my portfolio and I have a 200 positive delta, but I'm slightly bullish in the market, that tells me I need more bullish trades. I need more long stock, long call, bullish type theta trades, bullish type delta trades. I need to find more bullish trades. And if my delta says it's 1,500 and I want around 1,000, well, that tells me I need to reduce my exposure from a bullish perspective. So let's come back down to a $50,000 account here. So once again, if I'm slightly bullish in the market, but I have a negative delta, what does that tell me? It tells me I need to find bullish trades or reduce exposure on bearish trades. If I'm looking at my delta at 350 and I should have a 200 delta, that tells me I need to reduce my bullish trades or add more bearish delta through making bearish trades. So that's the first thing we wanna do from a portfolio management perspective is we wanna identify the delta and make sure our delta is always moving in line with where our market posture is. The second thing I want to look at is I want to look at my theta number and my theta number tells me if I'm cash flowing in the market or if I'm paying money to somebody else who is cash flowing them in the market. Now tackle traders, they love positive theta. It doesn't mean every trader carries positive theta, but most traders like to carry some degree of positive theta. Gino Port is famous for carrying positive theta. He'll sell any option he can get his hands on if he gets a positive theta. So understanding theta is very important because what theta tells you is the amount of money you're losing on a daily basis through cash flow based on the Greek known as theta or how much money you're making on a daily basis based on, once again, the Greek we call theta. 
Now, theta is the guarantee of the market. It tells you the exact financial figure that you are either decaying out of your options or you are capturing out of selling options on a daily basis. It is not a guarantee of profitability because you have delta and you have volatility as well. Theta is just one component there, but because it's the guarantee, most traders like to carry some degree of positive theta through selling options against their stocks in a covered call or you know the boomerang trade with naked puts and covered calls or credit spreads or diagonal spreads, the calendar spreads. There's a lot of ways to generate positive theta, but once again, if my goal is to carry a positive 200 theta and I'm looking in my portfolio and it says I only have 100 theta, well, what does that tell me? Based on my delta, it tells me the types of trades I need to find from a directional perspective. Based on my theta, it tells me if I need to be a net buyer or a net seller. So combining both delta and theta, they tell you the direction of the trades you want to find and it tells you if you want to be a buyer or a seller. So for example, Let's say I need to find bullish trades because my delta is 100 and I want a 300 delta positive. And let's say I want to carry a positive 200 theta, but I log into my portfolio and through the management of certain trades, I only have a 100 theta. Well, what that tells me is I need bullish theta trades is what that tells me. And so in looking at your delta, in looking at your theta, it tells you the types of trades you need to find and it tells you if you want to be a buyer of options or a seller of options based on those two numbers. Delta and theta take the guesswork out of the equation. It tells you exactly what you need to do from a trader's perspective. And once we've determined our delta and our theta, the next step is we go out there and we find new trades based on what we need to do as a trader based on theta and delta. In entering new positions, where can we go? Well, number one, we got the scouting reports we send to our community every single week. The stock report options, commodity, and the forex report. That's the type of watch list that I go to, and I work off those watch lists every single week. There's also volatility trades that we put in the options. If I need more covered calls, more naked puts, more stocks to, to get positive theta on, the Tackle 25 covered calls is a wonderful list. And remember, you not only have the Tackle 25 covered calls, you have the poor boy covered call list. You have the dividend fireworks and you also have the dirty sexy money list. And a lot of traders like to use these lists for covered calls, but others use them for boomerang trades and, and, and credit trades. There's a lot of ways to generate cash flow off those lists within the overall tackle 25. Now, once again, as we're entering those new positions, where can we go to find those watch lists? Well, you got the scout reports. They're used for swing trades and volatility trades. You also have the Tackle 25, which we use for cash flow systems. So we'll, let's go look at how to utilize those reports. Now, coming over to TackleTrading.com here, as you can see, you've got the reports right here. You can go to the individual reports. If you click on reports themselves, it'll just pull up a list of all the reports. You can see here's the commodity report, Forex report, stock report, report and the options report. So let's go ahead and look at the options report. Now, when you're looking at one of the reports on a weekly basis that we put out here, obviously we're looking at the options report put out by Coach Gino Poor. The first thing that you're always gonna find is a nice little write-up, something that's gonna help you. Sometimes it's a teaching segment, sometimes it's an analysis section, sometimes it's a breakdown on an individual component. It's really up to the coach what's on their mind that they wanna write about. Obviously, Gino's talking about position sizing for options trading using Delta and how to help Delta determine your directional bias as well as your you know, risk perspective from a Delta. Then there's a nice little video, obviously, you can see here where we're analyzing all the different charts that go into the report. And then you have the bull watch list that we're looking to work off this week with the entry stops and targets. You need to review the step system and the step system guide for all those rules on how to utilize those entry stops and targets. And then you have a list of the different charts out there. Here's your bear watch list as well. And so in your reports, you have the charts, you have the setups, you have the step system methodology of entering stop loss and targets, and then you have a video to help you kind of identify how to utilize those reports on a weekly basis as well. Now, the last thing within tackle training to help you do your daily routine and be consistent within your daily routine is the trader's lounge that you can go and get help with in your trading, get your questions answered, get help analyzing whatever you're looking at, and that's at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every morning over there at Tackle Trading. You also have the halftime report put out by Tackle Trading where we're identifying and analyzing everything that we do within the daily routine 
every day at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And once again, that's going to help you understand how to go about your daily routine, how to analyze, identifying the trends and the patterns, support and resistance levels within the broad market, as well as the other major tradable instruments, such as the dollar and Bitcoin and gold and oil as well. And then last, you have the Tackle Today email that we send out to all of our community with listing out everything we're putting out, whether it's a live webinar or live trading show or or a write-up or videos or or a blog or whatever we're doing in that 24-hour period at Tackle Trading as well. So when you're looking at the Traders Lounge, it's every Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Halftime Report is Monday through Friday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Both of those are right around one hour in length. And then you have the Tackle Today that gets sent out at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday as well. Thank you so much for being the best part of Tackle Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope this video has helped you understand the things that we need to go through within your daily routine. And if you are not a member of Tackle Trading, you can become a pro member of Tackle Trading by going to bit.ly slash join Tackle Pro. And you can get 15 free days on us to test out everything that we do over there at Tackle Trading.